Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are once again going to be taking a look at the latest updates from CMU Emulator, this time in their latest version release 1.17.1. Now, as with CMU's usual 7 day release cycle, and with this new version releasing further patrons on the 31st of January, this of course meaning that it's going to release for everyone else for free on the coming Friday, February the 7th. Now, before we jump into the changes in this new version, in my 1.17.0 overview video, I asked you guys if you wanted me to make you a reshade video showing you the correct and best possible way to use CMU Vulcan with reshade. Now, the reason I didn't make that video is because in 1.17.1, I was made aware of the fact that they were going to be completely changing how reshade works with CMU. So, 1.17.1 releases, I'm going to be making not only a brand new setup guide, but also a separate guide showing you how to fully set up and utilize reshade with CMU. Okay, so now that all that information's out of the way, let's jump straight into it and take a look at all of these changes coming in 1.17.1. First up, we're going to take a look at two general changes, the first of which is the addition of stick visualization in the input settings screen. You can see that when I move either my left or right thumbstick, this visualization indicator here is moving, telling me that my thumbsticks are indeed correctly mapped and working. On top of this, they have also added proper overlays and visualization for a dead zone settings. Once you have one applied, you can see that it is not only displayed in the on-screen display, but it is also shown exactly when your thumbstick is activating outside the dead zone by turning the little dot from black to red. While we've had dead zone settings for a long time in CMU now, it's nice to have this new overlay showing us exactly what they do, especially so for new users who aren't exactly sure what they are and what they do. Next up on these general changes, they have completely removed the VSync checkbox, instead replacing it with a drop down menu and added renderer specific options for double buffering or triple buffering VSync. This, paired with the new GUI changes for the dead zones, is a very nice inclusion. And if you've ever had any issues with screen tearing due to CMU's own built in VSync, these problems should now be completely solved. So now that we've gone over general changes, let's move on to the big stuff, the changes to the Vulkan renderer in 1.17.1. Okay, so here's why I think 17.1 is going to be a great update for pretty much everyone. They have completely overhauled the internal Vulkan object and resource management systems. These new changes have fixed three key areas of CMU's Vulkan API implementation. First of all, they fixed crashes due to erroneously releasing textures that were still in use. Secondly, it fixes one of the more major RAM or VRAM leaks that were occurring when using Vulkan. And finally, we are going to see generally lower VRAM usage since textures are now released as soon as possible, whereas before they were released on a CMU enforced 3 frame delay. Now, while this may sound like gibberish to you as a user, what this basically means is when you're playing the game for an extended period of time, you're no longer going to be using a crazy amount of RAM and VRAM. Your game isn't going to start lagging and performing really badly the longer you play. And thanks to this new fix, you should no longer see the crashes in games like Mario Kart 8 when picking up and using power-ups, or The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild when using ruins like Magnesis, Cryonis, and Stasis. On top of these general improvements and optimizations to the Vulkan backend, CMU team have also given us some additional workarounds and fixes. Firstly, reloading Vulkan graphics pack shaders will no longer cause your emulator or game to crash and secondly they have added a new debug monitoring statistics system you'll find this new debug option within the overlay section inside of configure general settings so there we have it guys those are all the changes coming in cmu 1.17.1 as I said at the start of the video, this new version is already released for CMU's patrons, so if you are one, simply check your email or CMU's Patreon page to download this brand new emulator version. Again, it's going to release for everyone for free this coming Friday, February the 7th, so expect my brand new complete setup guide for CMU emulator to release either on that day or the day after, depending on what time they release this new update. 
As I also said, I'm going to be releasing my reshade guide soon after that one, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled on the channel for that guide and video. For now at least, that's going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button down below. If you enjoy these types of videos, please consider subscribing to my channel, and if you're already subscribed, hit the bell icon down below so that you get notified as soon as I make any brand new video uploads. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.